Jeff, I'm curious to know what uh, your greatest learning was from all these many years of your research and your writings and your experiences with animals. Um, what would you say has been your greatest learning? Well, I think for me the point came when I visited a dairy farm because I had, I was a vegetarian for many years, certainly after writing When Elephants Weep I couldn't justify eating meat, but I continued to drink milk and eat dairy products and eat eggs. And I think it was, um, it was almost like an epiphany when I went to a dairy farm, I was here at UC Davis, and a graduate student, a very nice woman, was taking me around and we heard this calling of a, um, it, it, was, it was like a symphony. There was a calling on one side and then an answer on the other and I was intrigued by this. And I made the mistake of thinking maybe they're singing. And I asked the graduate student, what is this? Said, oh, that's very simple. That's the mother cow calling to her newborn calf. And I said, well, why? She said, well, they're separated. And why are they separated? Well, we always do that. As soon as a, a calf is born, we separate her from the cow because we don't want her drinking the milk. I said, well, why not? Well, we want the milk for ourselves. And it was like, you know, suddenly it, it became clear to me that the cruelty involved in this and the woman herself was uh, a graduate student who just had a baby. And I, I said to her, but imagine how you would feel if somebody took your baby. She said, yes, I think about this all the time. So hearing this crying, I said, how long does it go on? She said, well, sometimes it's a few hours, sometimes a few days, a few weeks, and in a few cases for months, they will call each other because the mother wants her child, the child wants the mother. So when you think about it, it's, it's just wrong. Why are we doing that? We are torturing these animals. Now, it doesn't look like torture, especially if you don't know about it. And people say to me, well, I don't understand. What's the problem in milk? We're not hurting the cow. Of course we're hurting the cow. We're just not always aware of the hurt. It's disguised. And of course, there's another thing, as I learned there as well, what happens to the male calves that are born on a dairy farm? They're killed immediately because they're of no use there. So either they're used for veal, and we know how awful that is, or they're just banged over the head as soon as they're born. So they don't have any quality of life whatsoever. So for people to say, and we like this fantasy, oh, the cows are living a beautiful life, they're on the hills. Well, they're not, that's not true. It's not true of the mother, it's not true of the calves. It's just something, it's a marketing device that's been given to us so that we don't ask deep questions about where our milk comes from. So that's when I gave up milk. How and long ago was that? Five years ago. Has it been difficult? To be honest, milk was not difficult for me. I discovered that soy milk and rice milk actually taste much better to me. Uh, I didn't have any problem giving up milk. I did have a problem, to be honest, giving up cheese. I had grown up with mozzarella. I'd lived in Europe for a long time and I loved mozzarella. And there are, by the way, now very, very, every, every year we get a more sophisticated um, product that tastes very much like cheese. It's not quite there yet, but it will be there very soon. Um, so I, I can't say it was the easiest thing I ever did, but I, I don't miss it terribly. And I find, you know, it's pretty easy to give up one thing if you substitute it with something else that's very good. And it's better for the planet too. It's better for the planet, it's better for our health, and it's certainly better for the animals. So it's a win-win-win situation.